So we will start with a classic techno drop, and this one is from the Joy Houser. It's called Warp. This one utilizes a drop into the chorus, and I will say this is the most classic techno drop that you can ever hear. It's used widely because the idea is simple: you have the break and then you build energy and then you drop right into the chorus so a lot of energy in the dance floor so we will start with the horn because we will go through three different drops i will try to save some time by just showing the preset and explaining it rather than doing it from scratch in this case i just use my serum preset pack and there was a uh, boris analog lead there and it's basically a combination of uh, two so tooth with slow envelopes and then you will have some distortion on top of that and some compression and reverb sounds like this and on top of that, we just use a bit of glue compression EQ and get this. So this sound is used a lot on the breaks and the drops in techno. Very classic one. So in this track, right in the beginning of the break, you have this big horn sound. Just marking the start of the break. And right afterwards, it starts those back hits to give ambience. So let's bring it in. The same idea here as well. Two saw so a little bit noise, and then some short envelopes to give this kind of horn vibe in it. So basically sounding like this. And on the FX size, we don't have really have much, I will say. Uh, but if you go back to the FX here, we have overdrive, EQ and echo. And we are automating this all the way during the track. So we start really dark, look at the movement here and automation here. And then here around. We are taking the sun sound out because here, just at this moment, we are actually getting out of the break. The, the most important thing over here is actually the shimmer reverb here that I'm going to send most of the instrument here to create the, create the ambience. And the second one is the Valhalla Vintage Reverb. This is a whole type of reverb, so it's darker, so to give this kind of dark under the water vibes to it. All this track is built on these two reverbs, I will say. And once we have this, there is also a LFO pad in the beginning, so just give the initial vibe in the track. In this pad, we have this kind of digital or a bit distorted sounds, sounding like this. Square wave and a lot of noise. However, we also have a lot of flanger to give this kind of movement in the track. You can hear how the sound really moves around. And the main idea is using this LFO one here on the rate and modulating it to give this really nice effect. So let me show you. And a little bit fixing looks like this and it just gives this nice effect these are just ear candies to really fill, fill out the space like this one is used only once in whole break i will say and once this is done comes the main arp so we will start with the first arp the main trick with this one is having this soft tooth but adding this really distorted uh, fm modulated layer on top of that so without this one if i play it and with this one it just gets the sound a bit thicker and on top of that I'm using the sub here. Not really as a sub but another layer is the square wave so thicken up the again the soft tooth. The main trick is using noise to layer it up a little bit and the unison of course the main deal here to get the sound real big. And this is really a very techno sound and used a lot in the, in the genre. On top of that we have really slightly hard distortion and a little bit flanger. And as you can see, I'm sending quite a bit to the Valhalla Vintage here to create the ambience. And then we are also sending a bit to the delay here. However, the important thing on the delay is a lot of modulation with the phaser and the chorus to give the delay effect really different than the original sound. So if we go back and solo this delay here. You can hear how much it modulated in the background. So let me play the arpeggio here so that we have that part done as well. And a little bit correction, the arpeggio looks like this, quite simple really, going up and down all the way. And on top of that, if we go back and check out the aut automation side, we will see that there are a lot of things that going on on this song. And the main reason for this one is that 
to create this build up effect in the track you have to go through all of these ones and make the sound bigger and bigger and brighter to open everything up so what is happening here the first thing of the classic one the cutoff so we opening up right this is the very typical thing however we are also opening up the envelope so the sound gets more sustained and then we have the gain so in the beginning we are very low and then we are voluming up so simple basic volume automation and on top of that we have the flanger in the drop that we are activating the flange to create this really modulated sound effect and the same idea here in the break we have a lot of reverb and then we are taking off on the drop because there are a lot of noise there and then in the beginning we have also a lot of reverb here this guy and we are automating down so here it's on the behind right and we are bringing into the front turning off the reverb bam 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 and then here we have the sound much on the front and then these ones just EQ like cutting off the loft and going up and then I think we are sending more and more to the shimmer and we are sending more and more to the vintage reverb as well so you can see the one single element creates a lot of ambience simply because there are a lot of things that are automated to give this big ambience so from here to here it's like when you stop it it creates sound and this is really utilized a lot right before the drop in techno tracks so keep that in mind however we just rent this one with another layer with the white noise so this one is the, basically a sampler like this a white this is just a white noise and it plays the same note however if you drop down the scale here so it means that it will always sound same like if i saw it It is just here to make this part a bit more stronger, a bit more white noise based. So basically getting this one here and then giving a bit gain so it gets louder and louder. And then the same idea with the flanger and so on and sending more and more. So together. And when it is done, once this one is done, there was also a blip sound. And these are exciters, I would call. And not many producers know about them because they are hard to hear in the really techno tracks but if you listen closely you will hear them so it's basically simple soft to hear a bit unison a lot of modulation to give this kind of weird sound so it is just in the background really It just here to excite let's give this a uh, sound and on top of that we have another layer with the blip sound and this layer has two notes instead and it's brighter as well so if we just listen to this one of course it is for, it's still same patch but a bit longer attack here so that we, the sound is a bit smoother but the effect side is the same and if i play this one instead now and together with this one I think the notes are not the same with the original. I didn't have much time to really close listen to this. But once you listen to these two, these two ones together with the track, you will hear what they do. Like. I know it's hard to hear, but they really excite the sound. You are really like, uh, something is going to happen. You give, give that vibes to it. And on top of that, of course, there is always the noise. And automating a bit resonance, a bit cut off, so the, it's a bit moving sound, I would say. And as usual, we then automate the EQs and so on. If you take a look, it gets brighter. Like the same idea in the behind, darker in the beginning. And then we open this up together with everything. And on top of that, I found this white noise that is adding up really nicely. And this is a trick that is utilized a lot actually. Uh, if you just like cut like this, like LFO effect here. The original track doesn't have this, but I like it, so I kept it. And once the drop hits, we, we, we have classic kick and rumble sound in this track. So I have this kick. Really big thumbby techno kick on and a rumble. This is basically a resampled version of the reverb. I like to resample it and put it this way simply because I can control more and I'm sure about how it sounds. And then I put a bit noise. 
and together. This big really rumbles on. The only thing that needs now is just like a slight EQing here and there. So let me quickly do that and we take a look one more time and play from start to end. So let's do start to end and meantime I can show you around with automation and the notes again one more time and you can see what is happening. So let's go. Yeah, and this one is the most classic techno drop, I will say, because it builds energy in the break and then jumps right into the chorus with a lot of energy. And this really helps dance floor to feel the track and go dance with it. The next one that we are going to take a look at is from the Enrico Sanguiolano. And this one actually drops into pre-verse. This is getting really, really popular at the moment because it cleans up the track one more time and comp composition wise this technique is really really easy because then you can reset the track and do the same thing one more time almost. So let's take a look at now. This time I'm going to use Diva just to switch between different synths and the last one will be the pigments. This track goes super ambience. In the beginning it's super deep and it opens with the single beep sound and we have Diva here. It's basically using a single square wave with a kind of simple short decay long sustain envelopes with a plate and a delay on top of that. So if we play sounds like this. And on top of that we start to hear the deep arp sound but it really changed during the track. The preset itself looked like this. So if you take a look at the uh, preset itself you can see that the most important thing over here is just taking those Si not sign here triangle waves and slight soft to it so to keep the sound simple so that we can get this bell type sound and then getting a slight resonance and closing down the cutoff and giving a bit envelope here slow decay a bit resonance and on top of that we have a bit chorus however we are using with the arpeggiator so if we play like this so it can arpeggiate itself more or less so let me play this and we get the notes down So the, the length of the loop is slightly longer than quarter bar, so it is like uh, creating this polymetric feel in the track. This really nice contrast on top of that. However, this sound really changes during the track. Like it starts with like a bell, turns into a brass, and turns into a big lead sound. So this is done by basically taking a utility like this, right? And the second sound, if I just open up the... Everything is same between these three, brass bell and the lead sound. But the main difference is just the sound itself. This one is utilizing a bit more soto, so it sounds a bit more like a brass sound. And the third one has the envelopes that is a bit more sustained, a bit aggressive. So what is happening here is that I'm like opening up this one with the filter. In the meantime, increasing the volume. And the same thing here, the, and then it goes down. And while it goes down, the other one goes up. So this is like a smooth transition all together. On top of that, we are just need to group them up and put a glue compressor. If you do the automation perfectly, you don't need this, but I always do it this way to make sure. So if you put a glue compressor and if you bring this down, if the sound gets too loud or too quiet in the parts while you are changing them from one to another, glue compressor will kind of balance them together, I will say. So the second one sounds like this. And opens that up and the third one like I mentioned a bit more like a lead sound.
and opens up all together. And once this is done, the real interesting thing is that you don't hear clap sounds in main room techno tracks oftentimes, but they use the clap in the break instead, like it more creatively, which is quite interesting and really works. So let's put a clap here now. This one is just unlock clap from my sample pack. We are sending it to the Valhalla Vintage Verb, so it creates this big ambience, just enhanced ambience, I would say. And then, of course, while we are going into drop here, we are teeing up the sound. Once this is done, I want to also put the snare here, so that we have this like a pre-roll snare ready. What is happening is we are just automating it by getting thinner. But I'm sure many of you are already doing this. Uh, the interesting thing is here, this is not an acid track, but there's acid sound in the break. So this is really interesting. The main idea is putting emphasis all the way up and giving a sl really small envelope and then playing with the cutoff so that you have this win win sound. So we are just playing the same note, D and D, D all the time, opening up the frequency. Okay, it's really crazy because we're also at the meantime increasing the resonance. So here, less resonant. Increasing this resonance creates really this big ambience. So this sound is actually in the background while everything is mushed together here. That mushing process actually includes a lot of different elements at the same time. And one of the interesting ones is the pad sound, the build up the ambience. The process itself looks like this, a simple really sustained sound, super simple. And the notes like this, just playing the G really, not really chord at all. And then we are automating this. And to make a contrast on, the, on top of this, we have a string. This one is just from my preset pack, the classic GP pads. We are playing the same notes again, but this one really automated quite a bit. So here. This really, really high pitch sound, it, if you listen to itself, it's really annoying. But if you play everything together, it creates a nice tension. And then once we have it, I think the more important sound in this track is creating this bass chorus bass sound. And the chorus bass sound doesn't need to be created by chorus. The idea is simply having sounds pan slightly right and left so that you have this bigger ambience. Taking this digital uh, oscillator, so this one has the multifunction so that you can actually use more than one oscillator and be a bit more CPU friendly at the same time. If you do it this way, it will sound really big. And on top of that, I even put a little bit slight chorus. And let's play the notes in this one and get them down. And they basically look like this, quite simple. And the idea is in the beginning you have this dark sound. Gradually opening up to give this bright sound as usual. And then of course we are playing with the EQ8 and of course a bit with the gain. So in the beginning it's super deep. And slowly bringing it in. So keeping this dark to the bright continuation all the time. One of the, again, more important sound is this one, is the horn sound. You have this utilized a lot and you have to get this one right. So it sounds like this. Really dark. But the main difference here is that I have an effect chain here first. The first one is the delay. So you can see that delay is here and then it's side chain itself. So when you click it, the first hit will be clean sound and then delay comes in when the initial sound getting less stronger but even more important than that is I have another effect chain here and this one is a reverb and you can see that the reverb is actually automated to start with moreover 
after the reverb i have the utility and the reverb is actually on the sides so in the middle area in the clean sound this guy it, it is still a bit stereo but when it comes to the reverb the reverb is only on the side so only in the stereo side so in the middle between in the middle of the sound we have the clean sound and on the side we have the reverb so it creates this kind of reverb but still clean dark lead sound so if i play it and this one goes into just the kick and the rumble so let me let me put those quickly and come back so this is the main reason why i said that the drop goes into the preverse and this is kind of a easiest way to create your composition so we have drop here and then when we go into drop we have basically the bass like we take a look simple bass and that horn sound that we created and that goes into just kick and tom so basically the low end nothing more so this creates really dark ambience underground ambience in the track so if i play them together The good thing with this one is because you now clean up the track basically you can you use the same thing and build up, build up your track next two or three minutes so let's do the same thing i do start the end and i go show you a bit automation in the meantime and you can hear how it sounds all together so that everything makes a bit more sense And if you liked the video up to now, and if you want to continue with the concept, but do it in the other genres like melody, techno, progress files, whatever, please like the video and comment now so that I know that you like the video and you want similar videos in the future. But let's do the last one now, and this one is from Charlotte David, and this one dropped into the verse. So let's take a look at that. So I will go quickly through the low end, but I have another video where I explain everything in this track. So if you want to go a bit more detail how this is created, I will put the link here so you can take a look at that. But the main idea is you have these different layers of the kick and the, so it, it starts with like having kick like this. And then you have another sub, like, like a rumble part really. And then you have the kick body together. And then you this percussive part and then click. And noise, another noise, and another percussion sound. So the, a lot of layers to create this low and with a lot of artifacts. Really cool, fun sound, but on the break, this is also kind of classic to be honest, that you just cut them off on the low end like this. Right? So that it's like a, still there, but you only hear the high end. But the, this track is actually driven super heavily by the super souls. This is mostly used in the stabby techno tracks and this is one of those so we will start with the steps so the main idea is utilizing super sauce so it's quite easy in the same pigments really i just use a wavetable salted right and then you go to unison and then you tune detune a little bit a lot of voices and a little bit stereo and then you open up the cutoff especially if you use something like a sample to be the resonant it gives really bright sound something like this and on the effect side we have reverb a little bit and the overdrive and a bit compression and a bit plucky envelopes here as well this is also included in my pigments preset pack if you want to take a look let's put the chords down now so that we have that one rhythm
So we have two different parts, as you heard. The first part looks like this. By the way, I forgot to mention we have also have noise on top of this. Just white noise really no doesn't matter that much. Looks like this. And then once we are getting end of the sound, like the track, and then we are adding another layer, the same notes, but one layer up. Creating even more drama with the sound. And if you take a look at the filter frequency that we closed in the beginning and open up, and then we of course play with the gain, and then we of course send a lot of reverb to make this big ambient. And on top of that, you have, like we did in the first one, the Exciter ARP sound. Let's do that. So we have Arpeggiator on this one as well, but simple so too, and a bit of similar envelopes here, like a bit plucky envelopes. And if we play it, And we are pinning right and left. And that fast cutoff play makes the sound really plucky but still a bit sustained as well. And on the effects side, a bit chorus, a bit reverb, a bit compression. And of course, we are opening up this during the track to make it brighter. And in the meantime, we are sending it to the big reverb. Like it's really tiny sounds, so really be be really careful with this type of things because even though you feel like they are small, they really add a excitation uh, to the track. I really love them, and and on top of that, we have some perks on the percussions on the break as well. Bass it, and then we keep continue with the exciter sounds. Really, the, this one is simple, double clap sounds, and on top of that, the snare like a classic old-school snare roll, roll, I would say. We are really rolling up, transposing the snare in the meantime, and then frequency goes down, and auto filter goes up, and sending it to the more reverb. And on top of that, we have another one here. This one has slightly different rhythm to give this... This cool sound. And this one drops into an AC sound. So let me put that sound and put some hi hats so that we have complete track so we can evaluate a bit better. Pigments make some really cool AC sound, especially if you play with the sound filter with a lot of resonances. And of course, we have a bit of uh, distortion on top of that with the pedal. And then cutting the lows. And on top of that, classical hi hat sound. We have this one. Like I said, this one, this part is on other video, you can take a bit more. But they sounds basically like this. Classic driving techno track. So let's do start the end, and then I can show you around with the automations and so on.
And yeah, that was it. The project files are available on my Patreon as usual and most of the sample packs and presets are on Mercurial Tones and at the moment we have Black Friday sales, 25% off. If you want to buy any of these, there's a nice deal on Mercurial Tones. And of course we have for produce one sample, the Community Edition. If you haven't seen it, I will add the link below somewhere here, so take a look at that. So you can take a part in the for produce one sample. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.